Joining us up here in the booth is the uh, director of pro scouting for the Philadelphia Phillies, Mike Ando. It's his second visit up here to the TV booth, and Mike, uh, we'd like to welcome you back. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Matt, it's good to be back. It's a busy time for all the scouts and the Phillies organization, particularly, and it would be even if the Phillies were in contention, but uh, there's a lot of players to look at because there's possibly trades that will be made sometime in the next several weeks, Mike. Yes. Um, you know, the, the, we're entering into that part of the year where uh, the pro side it's it gets uh, it gets pretty interesting finishing up coverage uh, finishing up the coverage and, and starting to move around and uh, whether it be on potential trade targets or trade targets or just just honestly in preparation in, in the event something can and, and does happen. Yeah that's the thing eh? we talk about scouting players the Phillies could trade for but there's also the coverage of just assessing other players and other organizations that's what every team does right I mean the, the main the main one the main goal we have is to create the database of information so we can uh, tap into it whether it be again whether it be for a trade whether it be for a uh, free agent um, could be for a waiver claim or you know a variety of different reasons so um, to have to have a report from year after year after year after year to see how uh, in the eyes of the scouts, the, the players either progress or or decline uh, is helpful, and it's just good to have that information available. Fly ball foul. Ryan Howard will give it a look. It's out of play. So we can have uh, reports and, and scouting on guys. And a big part of bringing in Herrera, Gomez, and Frenchy, Jeff Van Cor. What was the the big thing that caught your eye on those three guys? You thought it would be a good idea to bring them over to this organization. Well, if I'll start with in the du in Odubel's case. Uh, obviously, he was the Rule Five pick. Um, you know, we were looking at we, we viewed him a little bit more as, as a prospect that, um, in this situation, uh, and, and we had some good information with him uh, having been, been playing on that winter ball team down in in, uh, in Venezuela this year with with uh, Jorge Valandia down there. So we were getting constant in info on him. We liked his bat. And and the and the uh, prospect of him being able to stay out there and play center field, and then you know in the case of a guy like uh, Jemmar Gomez was a guy we've had uh, you know, we've liked in the past, and and you know he uh, moving on his fastball, what he can do for your bullpen, the versatility he provides you, and then finally with Jeff Francoeur, uh, you knew you were getting a good teammate, you knew you were getting a good person, and. Uh, uh, with where we were at, uh, right-handed bat was something that, and, and outfield defense was something that were uh, um, were important were important things to add going into spring training. Now, Mike, from a scouting standpoint, when you look at those guys, uh, and I guess we'll separate it because Jenmar Gomez and Frank Cor is the young man shows bunt, takes low. It's one ball, no strikes. You know, those guys. There's probably a long laundry list. All right, we've got these 20 guys. They could be possible. Players that could help us, let's say, going to 2016. You, know, you sort of rank them in, in what the team needs. Is that how it works? Yeah, we rank them how they need. We, you know, we have converse. You know, we go through the reports, we go through the information in the decision-making process. We see how they may be able to to fit as either uh, uh, pieces of the of the, the actual major league roster, or or you know, or how we see them fitting as as. As depth for the organization, um, just to be there in the event of an injury, or if, if you know we were to need, need to something were to happen, and we were to need that player for two, three weeks, um, you know, in our estimation, in our estimation, who 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 has the ability to come up and, and we think can help, you mm -hmm. know, help help through that period of time. I know over the last several years, you've kind of uh, would oversee the Rule Five stuff, and Odubel's part of it. Andy Oliver was part of it this year. Uh, do you enjoy that part of it, going through the numbers and saying, "All right, this guy could be a diamond in the rough if we give him a chance." Yeah, I, I, you know, the Rule Five is always a fun time of year um, for me, and, and I think that's something that it, it's a, it's. I've always felt that the Rule Five is a, is a situation where your coverage comes into play um, because there's so many players that could be available in a Rule Five situation um, that it, it's it, you need that you need it's good you need that. Database of information right. um, from year after year to, to, to know um, who you think might be able to help, and then um, how again how they may fit with the with the major league club, and 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 ultimately I think it comes down to the player as well because they're coming in with a deck stacked against them and they have to prove themselves. And you know in Odubel's case, he he did a, he did a great job of that from day one and and carried it through to the season. Well, for a Rule Five guys, I mean it's really it's a win-win situation. You're getting big league exposure. 
How often do you guys go out and how much time do you spend looking at a, a guy like Herrera to make sure he is the proper fit? Well, we try to get as many looks as we can. Uh, you know, with Herrera, we had a great uh, opportunity to see him every day down in winter ball. So that, that was a big, played a big factor. Michael, we appreciate it as always, buddy. We will uh, hopefully touch base with you again as the season moves right, on. Tom. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Mike Ondo, okay. our guest up here in the booth. It was a good guess because the Brewers didn't score. We'll go to the bottom of the second, hoping the Phils will get some runs when we come back.